this video I'm just going to answer some uh, question that I get asked the most is what's my next project and I never know what my next project is just depends on what I find but usually I sell my past project before I get a new project and uh, they're talking a couple inches of snow Sunday today is Saturday and if we get it yeah I'm probably not going to be driving this much anymore but I'll my project this winter is I'm going to buff the paint out on this and uh, just finish up a few little odds and ends on it and then this car will be done. But um, I'm going to do some things uh, for the 59 Chevy. So there's a couple issues with it. One of them, the accelerator pump came apart in it and uh, I put a new plunger rubber in it and it's, it works but it still doesn't work as good as it could. I don't know if one of the check balls or something needs you know sometimes I take a little punch and just lightly tap them to redo the seat but um I did pick up a carburetor kit for that Rochester 4 jet with the ethanol resistant uh, plunger accelerator pump this part was was what was broken apart on the one that was in the car this rod was pulled out of the plastic but uh, this comes with new check balls and all the gaskets and everything. So that'll probably be in the spring when I get the car going again. But one thing um, that I need to do is rebuild the power brake booster. So I got this rebuild kit for the brake booster. Now when I put the power brakes on that car um, myself, off, I got the booster off of a parts car and the booster was in an excellent condition other than this big um, seal right here had some brakes in it. So I wanted to get a new seal and this guy that rebuilt them wouldn't sell me the seal and it wasn't available anywhere. So I sent him the booster which I really didn't want to do. I already had it cleaned and painted and just needed this to reassemble it. And uh, So anyway I broke down and sent him the booster and when I got it back, it wasn't the same booster. It looked like it had been thrown in a, painted and thrown in a sandbox. I mean, it was just, I had to strip it and repaint it. But it worked fine for quite a while. Now, all of it, past about five, eight years, when the engine compartment gets warm from, like, running in hot weather, the brake pedal doesn't uh, release all the way. Sometimes i got to put my foot and pull it up a little bit. And uh, it's not the the master cylinder or the wheel cylinders or the brakes on the car. I've gone through that all that since. And uh, it's definitely the power booster because I can take the ma master off when the car is hot, unbolt the master, and it still does, the booster still does the same thing. You know, it just doesn't want to release. So I was going to rebuild the booster that's on the car, which... You know, I don't know if it's, it's not the same one I sent the guy, so I think mine was better and he sent me something crappy. But anyway, um, I got another booster that I was going to rebuild and just switch it out. It's this somebody, I got this off a parts car, but this rod should stick out and have a little threaded thing on the end that, you know, you so you can set it to the depth of the master cylinder. So I'll have to reuse that from the, booster that's on the car right now but the inside of this booster is in really nice shape so this winter I'm gonna rebuild this booster I got the the uh, vacuum tank and the check valve for it the check valves uh, in one of my toolboxes in the basement but this vacuum tank holds vacuum it's got you can hear a little see it's got a little dirt in it so I'll clean that out it, it comes out when you, but that isn't really going to hurt anything anyway. These mount on the inner fender. And, uh, but anyway, I'm going to rebuild this booster. This, this is just extra because I, I, when I stripped the, the power brakes off the car, I took this, this, and the check valve from the carburetor. So I have a complete extra power brake setup because I wanted to do a parkwood and if it didn't have power brakes I wanted to put power brakes on it that's why I picked up a second one of these but anyway I'm gonna get another one of these 
rebuild, I'm going to get a second one of these rebuild kits. Is I'm going to rebuild this booster and I'm going to rebuild the booster that's on the car. That way I have uh, an extra booster if I need it. And if I buy a parkwood or something. And this uh, repair kit, there. That's where I got the repair kit for the booster. If anyone needs a Bendix booster kit for their 59 or 60 shot. 59 and 60 use the same same booster and I picked this up a long time ago from uh, a, um, you know of swap meet and uh, I'm just gonna zoom in on that this is from Pine Motor Company in Apollo Iowa which I think is in, from my Google mapping, is in southeastern Iowa on the Iowa River. And that's what it is. And this is a complete brand new, somebody wrote 1960 Chevy, but like I say, 5960 was basically the same thing. If anyone knows where that Pine Motor Company is, and it, and it also says Burl Green. And I did some Googling, and Burl Green is a person, and that must have been maybe the parts manager or the somebody at the dealer that must have been employed there. It's a legitimate name for this town. Came back with somebody living there with that name. <coughs> but anyway, let me uh, get this out, and we'll have a look at it. I'll show it. So as you can see, it is brand new in the box. It has the original vacuum hoses this is the one that goes between the check valve on the back of the carburetor and the booster and when i set i'll show you here in a minute and this one goes from the booster to the vacuum reservoir and this is the vacuum reservoir here now this setup this came off of a 59 Impala. I, I unbolted that from the car. The hood was closed on this car. It was a complete car that I parted out and and uh, so this never was exposed to the weather because the hood was always kept closed. And uh, But anyway, here's the brand new vacuum tank. It has a U11C there and a UMC, maybe that, uh, yeah, that's definitely not an M there. Maybe it's UIIC, I don't know, but anyway, that's UMC. So anyway, if we got the instruction manuals. I've, I've had this kit for a while. I think I paid several hundred dollars for it when I bought it. But here, I'll, uh, if you want to pause it, you can want to read the directions. You can just pause it. I'll go through this page by page for you. Because if you want to put power brakes on your car and you don't have the manual, if you get like a parts car set up, and this kind of will tell you how you do it. And again, just pause it. Let's see if I can't get a little better light here. There, they're showing the check valve at the back of the carburetor. It looks like a. It says 348. That's a four. Four Venturi carburetor and this is the 283 and it shows the support bracket for the vacuum hose there and it shows the support bracket there for the vacuum hose on the 348 engine and then it shows the 235.6 should say 235.5 so that's what they were and putting an adapter and in the intake manifold for the check valve And again, if you wanted to 
Hopefully that'll show up in the video large enough where you can read it. They show relocating the oil filter and the 235. And then uh, this is the, this is actually what it says for 59. And then, um, uh, then that's it for the directions. And this is the template for when you mount, mount the vacuum tank. This mounts kind of in behind below the hood hinge back in there. You got to take the hood hinge off to mount these where the factory mounted them. If they're mounted up by the voltage regulator on the inner fender, you know, up in that area, then they're probably dealer installed. If the reservoir is mounted in the fender, under the fender in that well back by the below the hood hinge or factory. And uh, there's usually dimples in the inner fender where these holes have to be drilled. So usually you don't have to use this template. But there it is. There's another template here too. I'm not sure what that one's for. And then here's the brand new never used power booster. And this is the push rod I'm talking about. This one has it. And that's literally like brand new. So I can clean this up, give it a coat of paint, and that'll work on the, the Bel Air just as it is. So I'm going to clean this up and paint it. And I may put this, I don't know, we'll see. I may rebuild this one and put it on and rebuild the other one and save it. But I have a brand new setup, so... In the future, if I ever have a problem with the car, you know, if the power breaks, it comes with the pedal pad. Now, mine's a shorter pad that says power brake because it's a manual transmission. So there's a paper bag in here and everything's falling out of it. All right, let me just dump this out. I'll pick it all up here. There's the check valve. And... There's the part number, so if you're looking for one and you want to search with the part number. I got, I think, two or three of these. The hose clamps, the little spring washers, the bracket for the 283, little clevis and pin. So yeah, it comes with, with everything. This is if you have the six-cylinder. So you can thread this into the manifold and that into that. That's the 348 hose bracket. This is the push rod that goes from the, I believe from the pedal to, you know, the linkage. And actually it'll thread into something here. More uh, stuff for the, looks like everything. I've never actually dumped this package out. <laughs> so... This is the first time I've gone through this. Lock washer, lock washer. Oh, that's uh, the rubber plug for the check valve. I always put those plastic caps on, and then you just got to check them periodically to see if they... Uh... So, yeah, that's that. I'll have to um, probably put some type of lubricant on it to get it on. And uh, another one of those kind of washers, that washer there. So it looks like everything's everything's there. It's pretty much all that I can see. There's still some more stuff in this bag. There we go. I think that's it out of the bag. That goes in the firewall. Yeah, that's it from the bag. Is there any more in the box? Yes, there is. There's washers and stuff in there. Let's 
sorry I'm kind of messing you all up there. So there's there's the washers and the nuts that hold it to the car. So yeah, everything's everything appears to be here. Two cotter pins. The yeah, this is literally the first time I've. Uh, this is for the brake light switch on the pedal. So when you install power brakes, your brake pedal sits lower, closer to the accelerator. You know, sits down lower. So this attaches the brake pedal to work the stoplight switch. And uh, there's another cotter pin. So there we go. I just thought I'd show this, but that, I'll, I'll show you when I go to rebuild this booster, I'll do a video on it and uh, show you how I do it. All right, I'm going to box this one back up so I don't lose any of the components. I bet you this is an original bag, too, that these parts came in. And check a look, take a look at the box has. Let's see here. Yeah, so there we go. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, too, is there any other? It says Power Break 1960. Somebody has written on it. So that's it. And we'll get it back in the Three Rivers, Michigan. That's in the box was obviously made in Three Rivers, which is in southwest Michigan. Put all the loose little pieces in little uh, baggies so they don't get lost because I found one more of those little cotter pins. There was supposed to be four, and I found the fourth one jammed in the folds of this bag so I'm gonna put everything back in that bag but the little pieces are in there I just don't want to take a chance on losing anything there we go all back in the box I didn't want to take a chance on uh, losing anything so i just put it all back in the box but there we go again part numbers and all that happy stuff just one more note the other day when I was out cruising there playing Christmas music already on the radio. There we go. Crazy, huh? This is the 13th maybe of November. Not even Thanksgiving yet. Although I did put some Christmas lights up on the garage, but yeah, I was surprised when I um, they're playing Christmas music. Hopefully that doesn't uh, cause a you know, monetization issue. But I just wanted to turn the radio on and show you that, you know, that's playing Christmas music already here. Yeah, that is an FM station. And it is a little bit of a distance and in the garage. So the reception isn't as good as when it's out. Yeah, the speaker works good. Everything seems to work good with the radio. Another thing, too, somebody has one of these push rods from a power setup that's absolutely not repairable. Um, let me know. I'd be interested in it, and then I'll have another one. I mean, I have the proper tool that you put on here to set it to the right depth. So I could make a new one, but if somebody has one, great. You know, I mean, that would save me. I've been unable to find one. This one's stuck in there. It should just pull right out. It's, when I take it apart, I'll probably have to tap it out. But I think this threads into that piece that goes in the booster and then there's another piece that threads on the end so you can adjust the you know for the master cylinder and I suspect the one on the Bel Air probably doesn't work properly because see there's a spring right here and it's either weak or broken I don't know because the, the brakes when you release the brakes the springs on the brake hardware push the wheel cylinders back in and push the fluid back in to the master and shove the master back so that returns your pedal normally, but there is a big spring. I don't know. We'll find out when we take the one apart on the, the Bel Air what the cause is. It might be something in the this bore. You know, this is the outside of the bore. Might have pits or rust, you know. He, the Might have dirt in it. I mean, as bad as the paint job was on it, I you know, I painted it up like, 
shiny as that. It was like the power booster on the car right now. And when I got it back, it made this thing here that's in my hand look like brand new. It was really a horrible paint job. I was really disgusted. And I think I paid 120 bucks to have that booster re rebuilt, and that was back in the probably the late 80s, mid to late 80s. But anyway, the rebuild kits are available now, so I'm going to do them all myself. Yeah, i got to change oil in the truck, too. That's oil I got for the truck. I've only put, haven't even put a thousand miles on it since it was last changed, and it was changed last year, December, and I've driven it up north and back since, once, so... That's 740 miles right there. So yeah, I hardly drive the truck. I'm driving this. This is fun to drive. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, if you want it, you know, when I get ready to stop using this car for the season, I'm going to change oil and filter it, grease up the chassis and everything. It's got, you know, it's almost due. It's only a few hundred miles due for the oil change. I've been driving the car a lot. And... Uh, it's due at 83.30, and it was due on the 10th, which was a couple of days ago. It made it three months, and it's got uh, 79.920 on it now. But anyway, if you want to, um, if you want to see the maintenance, changing the oil and stuff, leave a comment, and I'll do it. Otherwise, I'm just going to do it because you know, changing the oil. And, filter and grease in the chassis no big deal but some people might be interested in seeing what's done but otherwise you know like I say leave a comment if you want to see it done but that's it for this video I think I'm going to wrap it up here um, you know if you like the video hit the like button if you want to subscribe to my channel at 348 engine icon we'll subscribe you and thank you for watching my video